Hi everyone, I'm Dan Fullerton and I'm joined today by the Flipping Physics crew, Bobby, Billy, and Bo, to talk about which AP Physics course you should take. Guys, can you say hello to the audience? Hello everybody! Hey. Hi. As you probably already know, the College Board now offers four separate and distinct versions of AP Physics, each designed with very different content, styles, and levels of mathematical complexity. What sounds like a very simple decision can actually get pretty complicated. So why don't we take just a couple minutes and we'll talk about the different courses and which one might be best suited to meet your needs. To start off, what have you guys heard about the various AP Physics courses? I heard that you get to use calculus in the AP Physics C courses, and in AP Physics 1 and 2, you don't use calculus. That's absolutely correct. You use calculus fairly regularly in AP Physics C, so taking calculus at the same time as AP Physics C is highly recommended. AP Physics 1 and 2, however, are algebra-based, so you don't need calculus for those two. I bet that means the AP Physics C courses are harder than AP Physics 1 and 2. That's a common misconception, and not necessarily true. Although the level of mathematical complexity in the C courses is greater than that in AP1 and AP2 courses, the AP1 and AP2 courses really cover more topics and promote deep, deep conceptual understandings that can also be challenging, though in a different way. There's a lot more writing, there's a lot more explaining of answers, and explaining what's going on, so your reading and writing skills will actually get taxed in those courses as well. So very different types of challenges, but I don't know as you could say that the C courses are harder than AP1 or AP2. They're just different. But do we get to do labs in all the courses? Absolutely. All of the AP Physics courses are lab courses with the strong experimental design component highlighted in both the AP1 and the AP2 courses. So why don't we take a minute and talk about each of the courses individually? Oh yes, let's do that. Sure, I've got time. All right, so AP Physics 1 is marketed as a first-year physics course. You could take it as an introductory physics course, although if you've had a basic physics course already, it can still be fairly challenging. By first-year physics course, that does not mean easy. The content it covers is really based around classical mechanics. You'll start off talking about how objects move, talking about positions, displacements, velocities, accelerations, then talking about how you change the motion of an object with forces, dynamics, Newton's laws of motion. Then you'll get into things like work and energy and power and gravity and circular motion and rotation. So there's a lot that's going to come into mechanics, even uh, momentum and collisions and explosions. So that's a majority of the course. Then things kind of take a U-turn and you talk about basic electri electric principles, electricity principles for a little bit, and then apply them to very simple series and parallel circuits. So not a whole lot of depth there. And then you move into mechanical waves, things like sound and waves in a string, and talking about amplitudes and periods and frequencies. And that's the content in that course. So it's not as content heavy, but the depth of that is fairly deep. And it includes a very strong lab and experimental design component. So that's AP Physics 1. AP Physics 2 is similar in... Uh, in scope in the depth that it covers as well as the methodology of the class but the content is a little bit different and there's a little bit more complexity in there because they assume that you've taken AP Physics 1 already you're going to build off some of those principles as well as some of those skills so the content covered in AP Physics 2 are things like fluids how fluids move and fluid mechanics thermal physics or thermodynamics. You're going to go into electricity and magnetism a little bit deeper, talk a little bit more about electrostatics and how charges interact with each other, go into more complicated circuits, and then throw in magnetism and electromagnetic induction. From there, you'll spend a little time going further in waves, but instead of mechanical waves, the focus now is on optics, electromagnetic waves. And finally, you'll have a unit on modern physics. We're going to talk about a lot of the physics developments in the last, let's say, 100 years or so. So modern is kind of a relative term for physicists. But talking about some nuclear and atomic physics in there as well. Some neat stuff. So again, same sort of focus as AP Physics 1, really focusing on deep conceptual understandings. 
AP Physics C Mechanics, on the other hand, can be a first physics course or it can be a follow-up physics course. It does require calculus. Although it's not calculus heavy, the intent of the course is not to test your calculus, but rather to use calculus as a tool to help you go further in understanding physics. So calculus is a good prerequisite or you could be taking calculus at the same time and probably be okay. Now lots of students across the country and across the world take this as a as an entire year course. However, there are some classes that have either had physics before or have a little bit more time that take AP Physics C Mechanics and AP Physics C e &M in the same year. Both are possible. Lots of people do both. AP Physics C Mechanics, as you might guess, covers mechanics only. All the things we talked about under mechanics for AP Physics 1, but in considerable, considerably more mathematical complexity and depth um, and using the calculus uh, and talking about how you apply these principles to a wide variety of situations. So it's more mathematically rigorous, but note that that doesn't always mean easier. AP Physics C, E, and M along the same lines does the same thing. It goes into considerable depth with calculus and math on the electricity and magnetism side. You'll talk about electrostatics. You'll talk about circuits. You'll talk about magnetism. You'll talk about electromagnetism. And that's the entire course. It's a very complicated course from a technical standpoint for high school students, but certainly doable. Um, really, you're focusing on Maxwell's equations as you go through the course. And at the end of the course, you should have a pretty good understanding of the four Maxwell equations that you use throughout the course. So higher mathematical complexity, lots of two-dimensional and three-dimensional reasoning, and really this is why you take calculus, so you can do things like this. So APC e and is a very challenging course, but it can be a very rewarding and a fun oh, course. Hold up, Mr. Fullerton, uh, but which courses are the best choices for college credit? That's a great question and one that's not so simple to answer. Each of the AP Physics C courses are accepted by most schools for credit equivalent to a semester of university physics. AP Physics 1 and 2, however, are very new and are organized very differently from most traditional physics courses. Before making any final decisions on which course you want to take, I'd highly recommend sitting down with your guidance counselor and maybe talking to an admissions counselor at the college or university you're considering to see what credit options are available. Ask the colleges you're interested in and use that to help make your decision. Sounds like the AP Physics C courses are mostly for students who want to go into physics or engineering. And for people who actually want to use their calculus skills. Even though AP Physics 1 and 2 don't require calculus, only algebra, it sounds like you still really work at understanding all the concepts in those courses. You should take AP Physics 1 before AP Physics 2 and AP Physics C Mechanics before AP Physics C Electricity and Magnetism, right? Absolutely true. AP Physics 1 sets the stage for AP Physics 2, and AP Physics C Mechanics provides many of the skills and techni techniques that will be valuable for students in AP Physics C Electricity and Magnetism. You don't need to take AP Physics 1 and 2 before you take AP Physics C, however. Both AP 1 and AP C Mechanics can be taught as first-year physics courses. Regardless of which course or courses you choose, there are tons of resources available to help you outside just your instructor and textbook. You can find terrific lessons and demonstrations covering all of the AP Physics courses from Flipping Physics, as well as lecture notes and my personal favorites, the review videos. His review videos are really helpful. And the instructor is absolutely fantastic. I think his hair is weird. Plus, he always wears tie-dye. What? kind of hurt my feelings. I also have tons of instructional videos, online tutorials, homework help forums, review books, and guide sheets on my website, aplusphysics.com. That is another great resource. I, I like all his practice questions and solutions. I can't decide if the floating head thing is cool or just creepy. Yeah. Whatever path you take, a couple final hints for success. None of these courses work well with spoon feeding in which the instructor lectures, students listen, and everything just kind of works out. In order to really understand the material and perform well on the final exam, you have to engage in the class on a daily basis, struggle through those challenging problems, try, try again, even when you get frustrated, make mistakes, fix them, and learn from those mistakes. 
Actively participate in classroom and lab activities and discussions. Ask questions, but be prepared to search out your own answers. You're going to have to fail and fail and fail again to learn how to do these courses correctly. They require active learning. It's not for the faint of heart, but these are great courses for students to develop the skills they'll need to teach themselves throughout the rest of their lives. Ooh, that is exciting. Thanks. The rest of their lives? Uh, I think I'm going to go take a nap. Thanks for your time, everyone. A special thanks to Mr. Thomas Palmer and the Flipping Physics crew. And make it a great day, everyone. Flipping Physics.